Good morning. Good morning, my people. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. Today is February the 13th of 20, uh, 2021. Are you, are you hearing me? I can hear you. I, I will find out for you. Small echo babies. Huh? Small echo babies. All yeah, but it's okay. No, it's okay. it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you. We didn't want to mess this up. We worked so hard in the background to make sure that we everything goes without a glitch this morning. So thank you so much for joining us. And I want to give a shout out to my wonderful sister Augusta. We will be seeing her back soon. Uh she's busy getting some stuff done. And today is my first daughter's birthday. Actually, I have a 24-year-old now. So my daughter is 24. Ooh. Yeah, wonderful daughter. Now, of course, I want to also, I know I haven't done this, but I want to thank my wonderful husband. He is my production manager, OK? He, <laughs> in the morning. he gets me going. He makes me my tea. He's like, go, 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 go deliver your people. Or I'll be so I want to thank him so much. So my name is Hona Kim Saga. And I'm here in Houston, Texas. Uh, yes, he's our biggest peer leader. And uh, as you can see, uh, like I said earlier, our sister Augusta is busy. She will be back soon. And then we also have my sister April to introduce herself. Sister, please carry along. Thank you so much, Sister Mona. Thank you, my people. Good morning. This is Dr. Equi Simon Okube, Lexington, Kentucky. We are happy that you're here with us. And a shout out to Sister Augusta. So we have a question for you this morning. He said, what type of mindset we make you, 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 stay in your suffering one more day? Hmm. When a way of escape is right before you, this is key of escape. So we want you to chew on these words as we take you through this ride. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope we allowed enough audience. Uh, I had to have a new system to go through. If someone can help us, give us a thumbs up about, um, about voice and light and everything else. If everything is okay, that would be awesome. So thank you for joining us. As usual, we send out our promo on Wednesday. And you know today that our topic is setting the record straight. A lot of narrative have been flying out there about what uh, is true and what is not true. So it's, it's time, as we are waking up as people uh, that find ourselves all over the world and being trapped in the fell state called Nigeria, we are now rising up to our challenge, I feel like, because people are participating in, in uh, things like this. We are asking the right questions. Uh, Nina's is up and going. The indigenous people are like, okay, no, 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 this is not good enough. So that's where the idea of setting the record straight. In terms of what people are doing out there, pretending to represent us, and we know who they represent. So as our promo goes, it says, my people, the indigenous people, you have circled around this mountain of Nigeria long enough. We have been spinning this wheel called Nigeria, but we are going nowhere. So as people, we have given so much energy, and we have made so much effort yet no progress it's time to reboot reset and reformat the system in data transmission system a reset button clears errors in order to restore the system to a normal uh, default setting in other words a new value will not be enforced except we rebuild the system the same goes in medicine the defibrillator is a process that brings a failing heart back to normalcy. So if something is dying, they whip it back into shape. So Nigeria is a failed state. It's time for us to move on. It's time for us to stop the bleeding because that's not what the problem is. It's time for us to, that is one of the problems. It's time for us to uh, stop wasting time and whipping over spilled milk because no matter how much you whip, the milk will never return. It's time for us to stop lamenting over what we, we have uh, meant to be. We must take courage, brace ourselves, because there is work to be done. Being a citizen comes with a whole lot of responsibilities. 
and so is adulthood. However, what you do not get to do is to continue to reward your predators and oppressors. You cannot, you cannot continue to allow failed leaders, and we know who they are, they are everywhere in Africa, failed leaders to speak for us because they will keep lying and deceiving the world about the true situation, which when you look at the underlying issue, they are part of the problem. They are huge, but they are, they are the problem. Let me say it, say it that way. Because they are benefiting from this state of disorderliness, of failure. And remember, like I said earlier, they are the one that masterminded these issues. So we must stop celebrating those who kept us in darkness and backwardness. How can we appease terrorists and their sponsors? Why citizens are dis dispossessed of their lands and resources, leaving them in detention camp called IDP? Does it, that doesn't even make sense. Why the international communities, they are now looking or they now know that the terrorists have taken over our land. They know now that terrorists have taken over the Nigerian government. They understand the implication of leaving Nigeria in a failed state because there is instability everywhere and it will spill over. So as citizens of the first state called Nigeria, remember you are a global citizen. So the world expects you to be responsible and requires your cooperation in order to restore stability to that region. So lying, deception will not present you as irresponsible, as it can only present you as irresponsible and dishonest being because they already know the truth. So join us today as we go in deeper, as we get a deeper dive into the things that have gone wrong and try to set the, uh, the record straight. We are going to look at, at our civic responsibilities and tasks in ensuring the extermination of terrorism in our region. We are also going to strike a balance between protection and allegiance through Nina's proposal, which is a time-bound transitioning process. It's a no-brainer. We don't want anarchy. Ethnic nationalities referendum, because we are no longer staying in that failed state. Establishment of new federating terms. Establishment of new federating terms. Should I call it in human times? Because the way we are right now, we are in, in the animal kingdom and most of all, suspending all election under the 1999 constitution until the grievances are resolved as proposed by Ninas and LNC. So my people, it's not that hard at all. So we're going to start today by playing a video because when we talk, talk about terrorism, some people think it's, uh, oh, it's in uh, Syria, it's in there. These people are all over. And you can see what is going on in that country called Nigeria. As of yesterday, another adoption happened of 30 uh, uh, the, uh, uh, secondary school students. You know, and you know who they will take for us. Of course, it's the girls. And that's why we mothers are no longer going to watch while our girls will be raped by these terrorists, even uh, impregnated by these terrorists. And now we have to come home with children that we don't even know who uh, the father is. So the time we are in a dire situation, we have no time at all. We must like us say so we must take off running because the place is on fire. Fuel now is uh, 212 Naira for a place that just went through COVID, for a place where people don't have a job, for a place where people are still dying of starvation, for a place where there is no governance, but they know how to raise the fuel prices. Oh, so sad. All right, let me stop lamenting because we are here to offer solution. So let me pull up the video for today. So sad. Um, yes. Okay. Every time we talk about the war on terror, most of, us, most of us limit ourselves to certain geographies and countries like Iraq, Syria, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. We don't talk about, let's say, Nigeria, where 317 schoolgirls were kidnapped by terrorists last week. 
We don't talk about Mali, where 10 soldiers were killed in a terror attack just last month. We completely ignore Niger, where 56 civilians lost their lives in a terror raid in the month of January. And we rarely see any international headlines on Burkina Faso, Algeria, Mauritania, Guinea, Chad, Ghana or Cameroon. These are all countries witnessing a devastating surge in terror attacks. Many of them have become the riskiest places on this planet. And we're making a big mistake by assuming that what these countries suffer has no bearing on the future security and stability of the rest of the world. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and we need to talk about West Africa. This region on the African continent, it is witnessing an unprecedented surge in terrorist activities. It has been called the new battleground for jihadists. The situation in West Africa is extremely volatile. All right, just give me a minute. I'm not sure why this video refuses to expand. Um, I'm trying to get that done because it's sort of tiny. Every time we talk about the war on terror, most of... So I want to get any bigger on this. Every time we talk about the war on terror, most of us limit ourselves to certain geographies and countries like Iraq. 921,000 people had been forced to flee in Burkina Faso. 593 people had been killed in Mali. 240,000 people were internally displaced and 592 had been killed. And in Nigeria, 489,000 people had been forced to relocate while 1,245 had been killed. The blame for these deaths and displacements lies with jihadist terror groups. Most of them have made a marriage of convenience with global terrorist organizations. Some are associated with the Islamic State, others with the Al-Qaeda, and all of them are pushing West Africa into deeper turmoil. But how did they emerge in Africa and why are they thriving? To understand that, we'll begin with Algeria. The year 1992, the Algerian military staged a coup to prevent the Islamic Salvation Front from winning the country's first democratic election. The Islamic Salvation Front was an Islamist political party. The coup pushed Algeria into a civil war, a brutal conflict that lasted till 2002. More than 200,000 Algerians died during this period and 15,000 others disappeared. Among those who disappeared were Islamist fighters who fled the country. They found refuge in the deserted areas of northern Mali. These were sparsely populated areas. The fighters rebuilt their resources, they allied with local rebel groups, and they began in engaging in criminal activities. In 2007, these fighters reorganized themselves into a faction and swore allegiance to the Al-Qaeda. They called themselves Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, AQIM, meaning Al-Qaeda in the Islamic West. This group had one aim, overthrow the Algerian government and set up an Islamic state. And to achieve this aim, the AQIM began collaborating and funding a smaller militant group in neighboring Nigeria, a group which now beats the Islamic state in being the most lethal terror outfit perhaps in the world, the Boko Haram. It literally means Western education is a sin. This group emerged in the year 2002, but gained prominence in 2009 after it turned violent. The AQIM provided the Boko Haram with weapons. The Boko Haram had different motive. It wanted Nigerians to reject Western education, science and modern literature. To enforce its will, it started raising villages and slaughtering people, kidnapping children. It then used these abducted children to carry out suicide attacks. In 2013, this group kidnapped 276 schoolgirls. In 2020, it kidnapped close to 300 school boys. And last week, it kidnapped nearly 317 schoolgirls again. It's an endless cycle of kidnappings and an endless cycle of violence. Since May 2011, the Boko Haram has killed 37,500 people and displaced 2.6 million people. It has turned 244,000 Nigerians into refugees. And in the same period, the Boko Haram has also inspired several fundamentalists to form their own terror outfits. I could name a few. The Ansarul Islam, Ansaru, the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, and Nusrat al-Islam. In the last six years, these groups have increasingly synchronized their operations and carried out multiple terror attacks across Africa. You may not have heard of them, but you must have come across these headlines, the ones that they made. The 2015 charged suicide bombings carried out by two women and two children. The 2016 Ugadugu attacks, where two former Swiss MPs were killed. The 2016 Grand Basim shootings, where 19 people, mostly expats, were killed. And the 2018 Ugadugu attacks, where the French embassy was attacked. 
And this is besides the many more raids and crimes that these terror groups commit on a daily basis. So what's driving them? Is it just ideology and religious belief? Well, yes and no. The problem is religious as much as it's financial. You see, poverty, corruption and underemployment are also to blame here. This is where the Boko Haram operates. The late. All right. So we have this video on our uh, Facebook page. Um, you can watch it in its entirety over there. This is just to highlight uh, some of the things that we are telling you today that the world already know. While our faith leaders are parading as the uh, solution uh, partners, as the one that will solve the uh, solution, uh, solve the problem, whereas they are the one that created the problems in the first place. And this is why this is so important to us, for us to begin to understand that we must speak for ourselves. Like we literally have to push the the cameraman and the media people away and whoever that is doing the interview and say, hey, enough of this, that we no longer want these people that are responsible for our failure to speak for us because they have hands. I can hand on here. All right, I'm going to play the next video. Nigeria, Africa's largest nation, a country rich in resources, I'm sorry about that. You won't let me expand it. I don't know what's going on. Nigeria, Africa's largest nation, a country rich in resources, but battling two genocidal insurgencies. U.S. national security is threatened. The International Committee on Nigeria, or ICON, brought together top African experts to bring a warning to Washington. Foremost among them was former President Olusegun Obasanjo, speaking at the National Press Club, October 14. How did Nigeria get here? Islamic State is defeated in Syria, but still alive and deadly in Nigeria. Thousands are killed by Islamic State's partner, Boko Haram. Jihadist terrorists burn thousands of churches in Nigeria's northern states. Whole villages are wiped out. Millions are homeless. Christians are being massacred. What is the root cause? Is it a fight over water and land? A religious conflict? An ethnic conflict? Americans rise in protest as media ignore the story. Genocide survivors visit United States, but many churches remain distant. When you hear about Nigeria, you begin to hear about many existential threats. We are elevating this story and conversation about Nigeria. The implication of Nigeria going down affects everybody, including the United States. Nigeria imploding, God forbid, the whole Africa will go down. The point that Stephen made while he came to the podium that whatever happens in Nigeria will affect the rest of us. Yeah, yes, because he created the Boko Haram, right? You give them the Sharia no. state. That's right, in a way. But if we do not put our own house in order, mm. most parts of the world will go on very <laughs> What would be a great pity is for Nigeria to be a forgotten country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mali. What has happened in Mali is that the Tuaregs and the Fulanis have come together. And that will go along the whole of what's happening. Good right? for you. Good okay. for you. Well done. Because the only thing that you will have, that you have in almost any state in West Africa is a flooding track. Yeah. In any state. So, if I see this and this one, now, get together with the flooding. What they need to do is take over a country like Libya, which is a failed state. <laughs> Libya has resources that probably not many African countries have. 
and if I see from whatever you have, it's over that. As I was saying to President Uhuru the other, all countries north of River Congo will be in trouble. I believe that genocide is taking place in Nigeria. Boko Haram has killed over 27,000 civilians, and some say many more. More than ISIS killed in Iraq and Syria combined. Greg Stanton of Genocide Watch has said the following, quote, Boko Haram is committing genocide against Christians and crimes against humanity, against children, especially girls and kidnaps to become sex slaves. Mr. Stanton went on to say, quote, Fulani militants in central Nigeria are also committing crimes against humanity and genocidal massacres against Christians. Uh, Congressman, we'll thank you very much for what you are doing. <laughs> After and, you um, break the mess, you are thanking him for For it. our part of the world, generally, but for Nigeria in particular. And, um, uh, I cannot agree with you more on the uh, point you have made that this country needs to have a special envoy to look at things and uh, hold things together. And you mentioned a number of them security, um, population, education, development, uh, particularly in the northeast uh, zone of Nigeria. So I think you need a special en envoy mm -hmm. for Nigeria and the Lake Chad region mm -hmm. because to coordinate the different embassies mm -hmm. in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in the surrounding countries, mm -hmm. and I think can bring together the, the, the forces of the United States mm -hmm. working with other international aspects, mm -hmm. England, <coughs> France, and others, to really bring about a solution mm -hmm. and stop the killing. Awesome, awesome. So, this is uh, our last video for today. So, do you want me to show the pictures now at, at the later time? So, say, yeah, you at a, yeah, yeah, at a later time, let's um do the presentation and then so that when we're showing them the pictures, they understand. Um, what, so what do you think? No, that's no. fine. That's fine. Just that it was so convenient. It was sitting right there. Okay, okay. Then let's do it. Then no, let's no, do it. Fine. We can go ahead with our our. This is sitting on the place so that we don't go into. <laughs> no, that is okay. I got. I got this. Okay. Got this. Okay. So this. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, so we are going to move on with our presentation. And as you guys can see in that video, we highlight the so-called uh, former president uh, of Sanjo or Busanja, whatever his name is. The one that just celebrated the birthday when our people are dying. The one that some people are referring as King Mepka because they're looking to be the president. They're looking to run for president in 2023. So is their King Mepka. And we just want to highlight how these people, they have systematically destroyed our lives. They have systematically did everything, imposed policies that will make sure that we go nowhere. They have done everything. And yet, when it comes to speaking for us, when it comes to asking for solutions as to what's going on, they will turn around and call the same man that created the problems. Do you see why we'll be running in circles? If we don't at follow up with Nina's protocol and extricate ourselves from this hellhole. If not, these people will continue to play with our lives because today really we are not human beings. We are monkeys and I don't know, chimps or whatever else they think that we, I don't even think they give us that kind of, uh, uh, they assign us that kind of worth animals because they love their animals so i don't know what is they look at us at, uh, as so let me pull up this uh presentation so we're going to give you guys a little information here about Ob obusanjo or basanjo so that we can begin to understand how these leaders uh over the period of years uh have been part of the uh, problems that we have So it's so it's so it's so sad. It's so sad, my sister. You see, like um, what you are saying, they are busy celebrating birthdays, 
Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Please go ahead. They're busy celebrating birthdays. Uh -huh. Yeah, while our people are dying, and he, 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 people, foreigners are the ones coming to tell you what is happening in your land, and you're playing games. Hmm. Rather than get on the board and get this thing sorted out, no, you turn there, turn left, turn right. Let's finish the presentation, my dear. Yeah, I hope I can finish this presentation. <laughs> so, uh, we, are, we, are, we are starting with the topic today, who's our Bassandra? You know, we just want to systematically show you how this man has been part of the failure in Nigeria. He has been part of the reason why we have not moved forward. He has been part of the reason why we will never move forward. As long as they are there turning around and speaking for you and going back and forth, we will never move forward. And thank God for Nina who understood this. Because if you're waiting for a passenger to come and destroy and tell you, oh, yeah, if you leave Funani, they will take over Nigeria and turn it to Libya and go right to, to, to Afghanistan. You know you will be waiting to, to your dad. You can see he's living his best life. I don't know how old he turned, uh, he, he, he became this. Uh, 84, my dear, 84. 84. Okay, with all the money he's stolen, he still looks like he's already dead, a dead man walking. So, um, Obasanjo, Mati Okikiola, Aremu Obasanjo, or Obasanjo. Of course, we know that he's a military leader who served the, uh, the Nigerian head of state from 1976 to 1979, and later he became the president from 1999 to 2007. Uh, in 1999, he became the PDP candidate for the presidential election. And then in 2003, he was, uh, I call the Ray in power through the so-called election versus selection. So despite his record for human abuses, massive corruption, uh, the global community praised him for overseeing Nigerian transition to representing democracy. You know, because you know the light was, you, I don't know if you guys remember not too long ago, that guy, uh, that CNN guy that came and said that Nigerians are the happiest people on earth. Mm. <laughs> Why they are stealing our resources. You know, so if we can recall what Gaddafi, our brother, told us when he was alive, he said that once any African leader begin to receive praises from the world, he's literally telling us that he's not working for their people. Rather, he's serving the purpose of the internal and external colonizers, and he gets rewarded with power and wealth. On Obusanjo, Obasanjo has already shown us that this is how hard they roll. So, Yes, yes. Donna, go ahead. You know, like what you said, I just want to remind our people Obasanjo was PDP, became a president under the, on the platform of PDP, did all the nonsense he did, and then brought Yara Dwa because he became the kingmaker in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If he tells you to go, you go. If he tells you to die, you die. Whoever he kills alive is alive. Whoever he kills dies. So he's the one that will say who will come and who will go. So he brought Yaradua and good luck. Because he's the king, he's the kingmaker. He's the owner of Nigeria. Nigeria is their personal company. The company of Britain's company and Fulani's company. Mm -hmm. And Oba Sanjo was their manager. Mm -hmm. so over for 11 years, he was running in and out of presidency. In and out of residency. And when he finished, he brought, not that he finished, they wanted to go the third term. He saw that there was too much resistance. He brought here Radua and good luck. And a good luck came and started solving problems, putting things in place, changing the foundation of Nigeria that will make us move forward. Of course, that meant that he would step on the toes of our kingmaker, Obasanjo. He stepped on his toes. You remember the pension scheme? So many other things that good luck tried to change that will make the people experience development. It will hurt them because these presidents, what they do, these colonial masters, what they do is that they will never do any program. They have two reasons of doing anything you see them do. Whatever they change. Darkness. Yes. Whatever project you see them execute, is either they are gaining from it personally or they're going to hurt their enemy. They have a foreseen enemy that they want to hurt. That's when they don't care about what will benefit the people. So if it happens that that thing benefits the people, it's a byproduct. And then the people will think it's working for them. So when good luck 
not did things that hurt other angels and his evil schemes. He turned against good law. Immediately, he did not care whether Nigeria was collapsing. He did not care whether the people are dying. No. It's Baba. Whatever Baba says is what oh. goes. Mm -hmm. so, so he turned around and then tore his PDP ticket and moved over to bring Buhari and turned against good luck immediately. This wow. is your so-called God song. He brought Buhari to Nigerians. I don't know if Nigerians remember this thing. My dad, they're too hungry to remember. That's why we're telling them today. So please carry on. So what are you going through today? Under Buhari, go and meet Obasanjo and ask him how far. Obasanjo, Obasanjo. Ibos, you know, God has been giving us code, codes in these names. Mm -hmm. If we will think critically, we will understand. Obasanjo, Obasaya. No, Obasanjo, Ebenine. Obasayo, Jo, Ebenine. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see the other one that say Oshimole. So you, you, you have an idea, Oshimole. <laughs> <laughs> Look in their names, you will get the code. Mm -hmm. Go on, Sister Mona, please. My dear, it's so sad. It is so sad. So we continue to look at the failures of our passengers. So during his term, there was constant friction between the legislature and the executive at the detriment of the country. He did not care. All he wanted to know, if he doesn't end by what he said, it was actually a one-man show. If he doesn't end by what he said, nothing gets done. Yep. So it's like uh, some of these people that are running some rogue franchise. It's, it's, it's all on me or nothing. Yes. And they they learned it from Nigeria. Yeah. And they want oh. us to continue in Nigeria. Oh. You come from the zoo. You enter the museum. Go ahead, please. My, yes, my sister. So there was a violation of various positions of the constitution and the systematic institutionalization of Ghana must go as instrument of political settlement. So if you do it, go ahead. Yeah, it, 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 because this morning, our people, because we realize that Nigerians have amnesia. They do not remember at all. Mm -hmm. Whenever something happens, my dear, they dance it away and joke and then move on. They hardly remember. They hardly link things up. And this morning, we want to help you to coordinate things together. This Obasanjo that you people are celebrating. And it, we are using him as an example. There are many of them like that. The people that created the mess we are in today, then you are looking up to them for solution. Meanwhile, they created this mess. <laughs> and when they were in charge, the mess was the same. It's just that my people say that Arubaha. So when you allow evil to fester, it will become the custom. So these people, they call them generals, they stole Nigeria, they stole the mandate of the people. They did. And they have been doing it like they're playing ball. Abasanjo will kick to Bubangida, Babangida will kick to Abacha, Abacha will kick to Buhari, Buhari will go back to Abasanjo. Then it's when, like Hajim Majideji, they hold the yam and they hold the knife, not the Nigerian people. So we are trying to tell you this morning, Nigerian people, you lost your sovereignty a long time ago. It's not today it started. They never had something. I, I, I never had it. And it's something they planned. They planned it among the gang of thieves. We call them gang of thieves. Mm -hmm. And they set up the political system that you have today. Set up the constitution that you have today. All these things they planned. Of course, we know that the finger, the hidden finger under is Fulani and Britain because these are internal and external colonizers. Britain is external colonizer. Fulani is internal colonizer. But Fulani is how people that you call willing tools. Mm. They use these willing tools to change things in the country that do not make sense. There are some things, you, some policies you will hear, you say, where is this going to? What does this have to do with anything? My dear, that policy is what will keep you in poverty, make you to be that is you're too poor, you are too afraid to speak. They have three things: fear, poverty, and military to hold the Nigerians down while they steal all your resources. They are all part of the same Amrobra gang. Yes, partners. Yes. Go ahead. The of our people. 
So during his terms, instead of setting goals and targets that can posit positively move the country forward, he played politics of divide and rule, mm -hmm. hate sentiment, religious passions, exclusionist agenda, and ran a one-man show. In 2023, under his watch, the price of petrol, uh, petroleum products increased 11 times. Hmm. 11 times for people in a country where people live under less than a dollar, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. live, yeah, less than a dollar, about 75 cents a day. Yeah. He increased the fuel products 11 times hmm. as a result of his so-called failed private, privatization program that he implemented and hundreds and thousands of people fell deeper into poverty as usual. So you can see this is a systematic effort on their own that they are do doing this thing. They actually, they, this is where they spend their economic money. How we can do this and do this, because the more they take you down, the more you cannot reason. Who in their right mind will be thinking about policy and politics when you have not eaten breakfast? Who in their right mind will be thinking about future when you have, haven't survived right now? So you can see all these things are efforts, or like my sister said, or efforts of both the internal and external colonizers to continue to keep us down. And then they will write us a headline news. Nigerians are the happiest people on earth. When in their country, there is water. When in their country, there is free uh, um, uh, uh, health care. When in their country, there's inf 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 infrastructures everywhere that people should uh, benefit from. When in their country, they live the best life, they go to vacation, they enjoy their lives. And while we are eating concrete, concrete. Yes, while we're eating concrete, they will go and tell us, they will put it in British newspaper for us. Nigerians are the happiest people. How down can I go? All these things was systematic people. In my them giving you visa to come and live in their country, all of them is part of their system to bring us down and kick us out of our country so they can continue their impunities. So, and, uh, go ahead. No, there's something. Because this writer uh, made mention of how Obasanjo, there's something said about tribes, you know, like divide and rule and and how, can you read it again, please? Mm -hmm. Can you find it? Something yeah. about being tribalistic or something. Yes, he said instead of setting goals and targets that can positively move the country forward, he played the politics of divide and rule, ethnic sentiment, religious passion, exclusionist agenda, and ran a one man show. You see, this person, this writer wrapped it on. Because this is the issue we have when people say they're professors, they're doctors, they're engineers, they are these all these big, big titles. Because what this big title does is that when you hear a big title, you think this person should know. And that was what happened to our people. When mm -hmm. we hear professors talking, say, yes, he's a professor, he knows. He's a doctor, he knows. Engineer, he knows. You're a doctor, a gynecologist. It doesn't mean that you know how to analyze politics if you have not studied what is going on. It only means that you can help women that are giving birth and women that are all their general issues. That's what it means. You're a neurologist. It means that you can deal with brain. That's your area. That's it. Do you not come and start challenging Brother Tony that is specialized in law, jurisprudence. That is his area. You're a professor. You're professing whatever you're professing. It does not make you a master of all. Yes. You're professing only in the segment of whatever you studied. That's it, too. That's it. Don't get it twisted. That's it. Do not Don't get, get it twisted. You otherwise. Yes. Because these days, we're going to start holding people accountable. If you call yourself a professor, we want your brain to be working like that of a professor. That means you, your mind is working. Now, I recently we had uh, uh, the one that called himself uh, Professor Morgan or Kinsley Morgan because when we are calling these politicians so that people understand what we, why we are calling them, we are not calling them just because of anything. We are calling them because that was holding our people down for their selfish gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at this, how this writer that knows wrapped up what Obasanjo did. But Professor Kinsley Morgan said that good uh, 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 Obasanjo is the best president <laughs> criminals everywhere that is a non-tribalistic uh, president mm. 
Did he read this article? No. Was he there to understand? No. But because maybe he gave him some cuts when he was deputy of uh, CBN governor, uh, CBN uh, uh, deputy of deputy governor of CBN or whatever. Maybe he's one that gave him that position. Maybe he's one that position him. So he will come and tell us that he's a wonderful president. And of course, he wants to go in for president of uh, Nigeria, 2023. That's what he's eyeing. So they'll tell me, you have to appease the kingmaker. You have to go through Baba. So even if Baba is, is sitting on the altar, Kings will come and tell us he's the best president. He is not tribalistic. Our people, Morona Anya, wake up, people. Wake up. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares. Nobody, you. nobody, nobody, nobody. All of them, all of them are part of this criminal enterprise to hold us down. And if you continue to believe them, whether they speak your language or not, they will continue to kill you. They will, I remember when they started doing this killing in northern area and all this, this we thought like, oh, that's their problem. It doesn't concern me. And we have heard the saying that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. It's just a matter of time, people, it will be your turn. So whether you call yourself Maha, 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 ha, or whatever his name is, whatever you call yourself, whatever you think you're calling yourself because you, you got a hook up to Baba, the Baba that destroyed Nigeria, and now you want to come and sell you and him to us, we are saying no. No, 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 no. 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 And it's a sovereignty dispute. Until that is addressed, then we get to choose from scratch who is going to be our leader. What part of that don't you guys understand? We are tired of the pacifier. It's gone. We can't do them anymore. We are not sucking your, your lies. We are not sucking your deceit. We are not sucking all this money making enterprise that you guys are running and then giving us a bag of rice on Christmas Day to eat with a with a gizzy, uh, uh, engine oil. It's not good enough anymore. It's not good enough. So you know they're fighting to keep us one. More Galo and the Obasanjo and all of them, all the political class, the people that my brother would say they never do well political class. Never do well. They do not ever do anything well. Look at the one at Imo State. Him and his brother, they're busy fighting. And say metum 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 while the people are dying. So they are fighting to keep us one for ease of colonial administration, mm -hmm. not for the prosperity of the people. They do not care whether the people are dying, whether they have eaten, whether the roads are good, whether anything is happening is not their business. So far they keep you together. One Nigeria, when they tie you together, it's easy to enslave you, my people. That's what it is. That's it's what no it brainer. is. It's a no-brainer. So. His failures continued. In uh, his economic program that he created without proper consultation, because you know he runs a one man show. Yes, now a, a recent person that we know of is the Alpha Omega. Alpha and Omega. He, you he decide who lives and who dies. Yes. So as he's making this program, that resulted in seventy percent of Nigerians surviving on less than a dollar a day. Hmm. Less than less than. I wrote it twice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> on less than less than dollar a day so that was that that was uh, during our person just uh, 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 presidency so the healthcare centers are we talking about they were in deplorable conditions i don't even think they exist because they have to be you have to be in existence to have to have it in deplorable conditions exactly education and agricultural sector were in a sorry state the country that we are uh, at that point we are import was importing food items from all over the world. Hmm. Housing was only available for the affluent. On built road became a death trap for daily confirmed accident and untimely deaths. The solid mineral development no, what belongs to Jigawa belongs to Jigawa. Hmm. Power supply unavailable even when they have spent over one billion dollars. Not naira people. One billion dollars. They shared it among themselves. They gave some to their friends. I remember the uh, the uh, the uh, company here called Halliburton. They got mm -hmm. into Congress for bribing for accepting bribe from Nigeria to set up this uh, uh, so called electricity. Mm -hmm. So this is you know as long as we stay, think about this thing, my people. As long as we stay in a place where we are not part of the decision making, the Westerners will always benefit. From people that uh, people like Obasanjo, people like Buhari, they will mm -hmm. benefit from them being in charge. 
Yes. What, what, because it will give them the clearance in their heart that they, oh, I'm not invading a country. I went to their president. He gave me a contract and I took the money. So I'm not a bad person. Mm -hmm. Get them to validate what they're doing to us. Yes. So they set these people up there so that they can be uh, manipulating them. Look at Burhari and ruining. Burhari can't even run his household. Much but more. He, he can't even lead a dead dog. A dog that is dead. He can't lead this one. He dead one. This is a How man. His country is on fire. He is a trigger. Uh, like this. Yes. Are you guys kidding me? Buhari, none of them, none of them. When you hear them speak, whether they speak fluently or they speak British language or whatever, man cannot own a fair fake because it flies all over the place. Fair fake. All of them is all about the apostles of people. That's okay. When they see now, they're trying to attach themselves good at to good things. Whenever they see good things going on, they'll try to fly over there and attach themselves to it. And we're saying we don't want any more pets. We are not your dogs anymore. We don't want to be your shot. We quit. We don't yes. want to be your dogs anymore. No, no. You see, no. no. So are you talking about inadequate water supply? Mm. <laughs> that people are still now still suffering. I actually had a heated argument with some colleague of mine talking about how Africans are not doing this and are doing this and uh, they are not following the international uh, global health guidelines. Listen, mm. mm. fire your mouth. Oh, you boy. Or guidelines. Mm. So when my people are dying of hunger, you created your so-called COVID so you can make vaccine and make your good old boy network rich. You never provided for them to have water because every day they leave their homes to fetch water. They leave their homes to get food. All of a sudden, you want to lock them up in a house because you want to make us think that we're all going to... Of course, if I sit in the house, if I die, if I leave the house, I die. So damn it, I'll go leave the house at least eat. Yeah. So they are not understanding you know uh, uh, what we go through as the people they go to harvard they go to here they sit in their c suite and they make decisions and say yeah here in, in uh, 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 nigeria they should be doing it like this doing it like this whereas we don't even have the resources. we haven't even eaten talk less of resources this is that i know the in the video that you played the second view i think you know the man he, he said it there he said, some of you think you know Nigeria. He was talking to his own countrymen. Yes, yes. He said, you go to Abuja, stay in Nikon Nigo for three hours. Wow. Then you come around and say, I know Nigeria. I've been to Nigeria. He said, you don't know Nigeria. And then you have no interaction with the people. Mm -hmm. When you keep interacting with these armed robbers, these criminal gangs, like Obas and John Mong, these people that steal our money, they have their association and they benefit themselves. If you keep interacting with them, you will never get the true picture of what is happening in Nigeria. You will never. Absolutely. And that's what we're saying. People, don't wait for anybody to speak for you. Power belongs to the people. Yes. You, you, you are the one that will stand up and use the key that has been provided before you to free yourself because they never wanted anything good to come to you. They never wanted to build your hospitals. They never wanted to build your roads. They never wanted to give you water. They never wanted to give you light. Never ever. It was not in their thought process to provide those things for you. Because if they provide those things for you, you will become rich and then you will begin to ask them questions. So they wanted to keep you in perpetual poverty, perpetual ignoramus state, so that you do not ever ask for what belongs to you. So do not, I repeat, do not look up to them for solution because your solution will never come from people that are benefiting from your sorrows and your woes. Go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sister, with you know the interesting thing about this, there was a video that I was watching about uh, the people of Jamaica. Do you know they implemented the same thing in Jamaica? They make sure they actually have a policy that they will never have like complete light, hmm. they will never have complete road, they will never have a hospital, they will never have school. The same way they implement, they uh, minimize things that can be done in Africa is the same way that they did even here in Jamaica, you know. So the this guy that went to their school, the guy went to their school and did his research and mm -hmm. he came out and presented this information. So hmm. all this was intentional. They were intentional when they were doing this. It was never meant for us to, to be part of it. And then when they see that you're, think about what they set up the embassies in our land. Mm -hmm. when they have you and interview you and they feel like you may be one of those that will rise up and ask questions. They will give you a visa and say, go and become a slave in our country. Boom, yes. over, monkey, fly over there. Can you guys clean here our toilets? Mm -hmm. Ask for your mother to come and visit you because you have a baby. They will tell you to fight green card and have your mother and your father come and live here. 
You said, no, 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 no. I just want them to stay with the baby for three months and go back. They said, no, no, no. Let, they, you, they will refuse. I called my congressman. He said, oh, the new policy now is that you have to file green card for your parents. Whereas people from, uh, from China, people from India, people from Jamaica, I mean, from Germany, people from even Jamaica, if they want to come, they will give them visa and send them back. But for us, intentional. Remember, they even started that visa, and we are all jumping. Visa lottery. Oh, I got visa lottery to leave my mm. Let mm. me go and give testimony. When is tomorrow? Hey, hey Pastor, I'm coming to give testimony. I got visa lottery. My people, intentional removal of the people from their land. Yes, forced you migration. They will smoke you out of your land. They will use Boko Haram to smoke you out. They will use Visa Lottery to smoke you out. They will make everything uncomfortable and unbearable for you so that you're not able to get job. You're not able to create job. Even when you want to create job for your people, you will not create, you will not be because they will frustrate you. They will sabotage you and then make your people miserable and they start striking through Mediterranean Sea, through Libya, through dungeons, through desert, everywhere, scattering. My people check now, is there any other group of people that are scattered all over the world like bees? What happened to our own land? Because they're interested in taking your land. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. They're not here for you. That's why they give you slave masters as, uh, as your leaders. Your leaders are not your leaders. That's why you can never choose your leaders. There's never, you will never have a credible election. Never ever is part of the system. You will never have the opportunity to, to, to elect your leaders. You will never. Those of you that are hallucinating for 2023, hallucinating for all sorts of election, you will never be allowed to select the people that will lead you. They will impose leaders on you. And those leaders will be members of their criminal gangs that will make sure that they continue to keep you in poverty, continue to make sure you suffer and suffer until you die. Islamuna. Is it frozen? Hello? Hello? I don't know if people can hear me. So we're telling you this morning, how do we know if you can hear me? Because I can't hear Sister Mona. So we're telling you that you need to stand up and face what is before you. There is a solution. There is a key. There is a key. The key is here. We need to reset the system. We need to reset this system. We need to rebuild it. We'll start afresh so that we can have a country or countries that we can call our own. It is not okay for us to go through another roller coaster. When you continue to drive, drive, drive without any solution, making efforts, making efforts, going in circles all the days of your life. I just lost a cousin. What happened? They were at Ore Road and they had arm robbers, arm robbers. Of course, he, had, he must have had issue, he had issue with hypertension. Untreated. Where's healthcare? There's no healthcare to treat anyone. Hold on, please.
Okay, viewers, sorry, um, we don't know what happened, uh, the technology uh, fell upon us, on us. So we go back to Zoom to continue this program. Please um, hang on. We we will win this battle. We don't care. Attack us. Stop what we're doing. We will not stop. That's one thing we promise you. We will not stop and our people will not stop because our people are awake now and are about to take their freedom. Thank you very much. Please hang on. We're going to move again to Zoom. Thank you. All right, viewers, sorry, please hold on. Um, I think this is someone is, is trying to change the laptop because it's only hard that they're knocked off. I don't, we don't know what is going on. So we'll continue to uh, talk. Um, let, let her get back on. And then, so as I was saying, power belongs to the people. Power belongs to the people. We thank God for the work that Nina has, has done. And with this work that they have done, we can free ourselves effortlessly. We are not here for people that are doing election, that want to become president of Nigeria, when they don't even have plan on how to become president of Nigeria. When, what are you going to do? What other plan do you have? We're asking people like Professor Morgan, what do you want, what miracle do you want to do that good luck? A better Jonathan could not perform. You witnessed what happened to him. You saw what, all the things that, happened to him you saw it now you want to become what at the detriment of your people you want to warm up to Obasanjo so that he will make you the president how was the election the last time what happened the last time you tried how many people voted for you so that's a dream you want us you want you want us to hang our destiny on your Neither here nor there campaign. Samuna, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, whatever we're hitting them hard, they will go and tell They come. <laughs> I told them that we don't care. We are here. The women of Africa are here to take over the land for their yep. children. Yep. So no amount of your manipulation, no amount of your turn me off and turn me on and all this stuff will work. We are serious about our children. So sorry about that. I was caught all of a sudden. They cut me off, turned out my thing and all that. I had to log back in. But it's okay. We are not relenting. There is work to be done. All right. Sister, you continue. Let me find my screen and finish the uh <laughs> okay, through the presentation. Yes, I was actually, yeah. Okay. So as we are saying, we are talking to political uh, uh the political class, the politicians. More or less just a representation of them. Yes. It's not him alone. We're not calling him alone because that's how they reason. The way they think, the way Morgalo thinks, even when he calls himself a professor, that's the way that political class, that's how they think. They are out of touch, Sister Kui. They are out of yes, touch. Yes, they are out of touch. They are not in tune with what their people are going through. Mm. They come with a high politic uh, idea like, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do because I'm a professor of mathematics. I solve mathematics. <laughs> and then uh, Nigeria will work. Mm. When you are not aware, you have, and some of them are aware of the problem because if you listen to Marale, you will know that he knew what Ninas is doing. He knew that constitution, uh, 1999 constitution is a problem. He knew that we needed to do regional, region, that we anything we were going to do, we we're going to go back to the regions. He knew all that. He knew all that. He had all that information. Then he would turn around and say, Vote for me so that I can do it. <laughs> really? <laughs> eh? Professor. Mm. And that's something we would like to teach our people about because, you know, for so many years, they deceived us with their degrees. I am Dr. This, I am a professor this, I am a Makwonyeun with this, I am a advocate this. And when you look at their reasons, you can see they can't even manage. Some of them, their wife has, their wife has already kept them out of the house. Again, we keep using family as an emphasis. They cannot manage your wife and two kids but you will see them running around. If you interview more Hallow's wife, now you find that she has been in bondage. <laughs> yeah, she may be going to Dubai to buy her clothes and all that yeah. stuff. 
But half of the time, the man is not home. He's in a hotel room with 16 year old because they want the country to stay the same way so they can continue to molest our children. It's we sad. know what they are doing. It's sad. It's our sad. prayer is that people will begin to understand that these people, this political elite, will never speak for you. They no. will never mean well for you. They no. will never look out for you. Because at the end of the day, it's all about Ogen Kameh Rola. I need to collect. Yes. yes. I have you say yes. Ogen Kameh Rola. It is my time. Yes, it's my time. It's my time. I need to collect. You know, Sister Muna, this thing does not make sense. Like this small law of a person now. He's from Newi. Newi children and boys are running up and down looking for how these are very industrious people. Looking for how to walk to the Mediterranean Sea all over the world, looking for how to get greener pastures. Then he is having dream of how he will help the Almajris and Boko Haram in Sokoto, in Kasina. How he will do this and remove poverty in Sokoto? Have you removed the poverty at Inewi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about his father's uh, uh, village? He's talking about the whole. He's, an, mm -hmm. he's a chief. Though. He said he's chief of Inewi. Now you're a chief. You are doing your chieftaincy in 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 in, Amer in America. What does chief mean? Chief means that you are ruling your people. There's a reason why you're a chief. And you're supposed to be chiefing it in your land. But no, you're an exile in the US with your children. You can't even afford to bring your children home because you're afraid of what will happen to them. Yet, you want to lead my people. You want to speak to my people. You think you know it all. When my people are saying, this is where the pain is. This is what is hurting us. No, you don't live to listen to them. You want to help us up a full animal in Karan Abuda. You have a full animal in Sokoto. What if, if you have your own nation and you become the president of that nation? No, because they will micromanage you. He wants to make your own money from that loose Nigeria that is useless and failed. Where everybody is stealing and nobody is catching them, no accountability. That's mm. what you want to be the head of. Right. right. You, want to, you want to be the head of a failed state, not a new nation that you can nurture and bring into like limelight and the, the world will marvel. No, you want to stay where there's mess so that you will marinate in the mess and then get your own cuts and become the Ezego of your village. And all your villagers will come around you as Almadris to ask for bread and rice at the end of at December. And you bring engine oil and give them. Hmm. My dear, this failure that we're talking about is everywhere. If you recall the people of the so-called World Debo Congress that was started here in America, this, uh, this group encompasses of so-called professors and educated elite and professor emeritus, my dear, the Alamajuri in the forest is better than them. Mm -hmm. They will follow someone without doing any investigation because they want to belong with the trending names. Yes. They, want to hang with it. they don't care about their people. Mm -hmm. They will go to uh, Asorok. I remember that I've told this story several times. They will go to Asorok and look at the, the cabins in the ceilings mm. for hours. That they, when they come back to Houston and to give us reports, the man wanted to spend 30 minutes describing what was in Asorok. I said, over my dead body, I'm getting out of this meeting. This and the others were there listening to the foolish man. Yeah, they were like, None no, of them said, one day, is this one? He exactly. said, my picture, can I see the picture? My dear, our people are gone. The point that we're trying to make is that do not wait for anyone to speak for you. Whatever that you find yourself, even if you don't speak English, English is not a, a measurement of IQ. It's just a male language. Yes. And we keep emphasizing that's why people in China will speak China, uh, Mandarin, Mandarin, and they're developing their country. That's why people in Italy will speak uh, Palomo and they're still building. That's why people in India will speak their language and they're still progressing. Do not let any freaking professor intimidate you with their education. English. Do not let them intimidate you with their uh, uh, English. I, I'm not saying that school is not good, but you need to engage them. Don't limit yourself and say, oh, I can't always be in there. No, no, no. Common sense sound that our forefathers has, has our forefathers have passed on, or on to us. You can use it to ask them questions and they see to manage no how the issue. Exactly. Because exactly. you're a neurosurgeon doesn't know you know how to do mechanic. At the same time, you don't want mechanic doing neurosurgery. Everybody, Stay on your lane. Go ahead. Stay on your lane. Mm -hmm. But you must apply critical reasoning. 
You must, you cannot deceive us anymore. You will not come and tell us fabu, what we call fabu in Nigeria. Fabricated story. Things that are disjointed. Ikoroba go, Ikoroba da. You go up, you go down. And the people are saying, what's the meaning? You use high politic language and confuse them. Speak what the people will understand. And then they ask you a question, you will explain it. If you cannot make a meaningful thing, like let's say security, it's normal for anybody that is thinking well to know that we need to solve the issue of security before we start going for election. No, it's it's, a, it's if my people said it in the language. Now, now, what's up? It was a good thing that if your land is in danger, you are not there looking for who to vote for. It's safety first. Whether you're speaking Igbo, you're speaking Hausa, you're speaking Yoruba, you're speaking English, it's safety first. But anybody that is coming to tell you that you should leave this issue of safety that is on ground and start voting for him, that person is a criminal. Born Born. Say that person that doctors don't choose, say that person is a criminal. You are a criminal. I don't care whether you answer professor, doctor, engineer, whatever you answer, you are a criminal. Look at our people at Aglary demonstrating the women saying that uh, Obiano there is taking all their land in the name of building international airports. Because that's what they will do. They will tell you they want to build international airport. Actually, they want to bring land for the Fulanese. Yep. Because it's not nobody is, is supervising what they're doing. So they will make the indigents to give up their lands in the anticipation that an airport is coming to them. Meanwhile, there's no airport that will come. Even if you come, it will be a mushroom. Mushroom. What small checkered thing that you ask yourself? Is this why you took my land? But at that point, you can't ask them anymore because they have given all the land to the Fulanese. So they are agents of Fulanese. All of them. All of them. All of them. Without we to them as internal colonizers. Yes. They are agents of Fulanese, all of them. No exception. No exception. Anybody that you are saying that Fulanese are taking your land and you say vote for me, that person is a criminal already. He's already working for the Fulanese. Go ahead with the presentation. My dear, we are about to finish the last one. So during okay. the uh, terms of uh, uh, Basanjo, we saw overwhelming poverty and un unemployment, which is still ongoing. He implemented policies designed by international financial organizations, outside international financial organizations and donor agencies that does not support development. That's what he implemented. Mm. This does not support development. He encouraged the development of underdevelopment. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. He encouraged development of underdevelopment and promote capital flight to serve the colonial purposes. Bottom line is that Obasanjo government lacked a cohesive, coherent, articulate, people-oriented and comprehensive economic policy. That means Obasanjo actually helped to catapult us into deeper slavery that we found ourselves when he showed up. So we already know we are not criminals like other people that steal information. Uh, this was done by our brother in UK, uh, Ayo, Ayo Obole, Ayo Bulu. So Ayobulu, we thank you so much for this information. Uh, this is wonderful. This is what we want people to use their degree to do, to critically analyze what's going on at home. Mm -hmm. a, a press report for people to understand what's going on. For you to lie to your brother and so Basanja is a, a nice man. Uh, mm -hmm. Basanja did this for me because he can look at okay. mm -hmm. Taking your share and you want our people to remember in bondage. We're saying, you no, know, not again, my brother. You don't get to do all of that. Wait, wait. And Samuna, do you know another thing that um, that uh, uh, is even more galore of a person said? He said that Boko Haram is a non-issue. Of course, he's in America. It's a non-issue to him now. Yeah. He's not in here. A fourth, the, the fourth most dangerous global terrorist group is a non-issue. Out of touch. Are you kidding me? Mm. He said that uh, people that say they don't want English, uh, uh, Western education, what is that to me? He does not even understand the link. Very selfish and greedy, greedy people. He does not even understand the link. He said, I will protect the borders when you vote for me. Really? How do you want to protect the borders when military, when Boko Haram has infiltrated the military that you want to use? Are you not that, that out of touch? So out of touch, my sister. So out, out of, of touch. touch. Are you not saying that all the systems of governance in Nigeria have been taken over by Fulanese? 
How do you intend to do it? What magic do you want to do? Who will even give you that power? Will full like this not give you the power? What is what is your what, how do you it's crazy? People will not just think they want us to hang our life and destiny on their bloody ambition. You want what you want, whether we are dying or not, it's not your business. Mm -mm. You can speak English. Mm -mm. You are an exile in the US. You don't know what your people are going through. Because if you're not an exile, you should be back home with your whole family. All your children and wife should be at Newe. If we develop our nation, Newe should be a big city that you will be living there if you want. But no, you'll be on exile in the US and tell my people I want to come and lead you. Meanwhile, our brothers are dying, running away because Boko Haram is at Newe chasing them in the name of a uh, uh, military. Looking for how to kill them. So you know the solution. Minas is already here with solution. You know what they're doing. You know what you are doing that if we can follow what Minas have put on the table, we will be able to gather our children, our daughters and sons, scattered all over the world, we'll be able to bring them back home and give them a befitting home. But you say no, we have to wait for you till 2023. That you are not even sure. How can you call that a professor? We are showing our people. Is a picture already? Yes. So these pictures, our people, this is a, a picture, like, you know, picture tells it all. It, when people talk and you just keep quiet, sometimes LNC, Nina, you just keep quiet and not talk to people because you know what you mean. But today we feel like it's okay for us to show you some of these pictures. We have them already in our wall for you to see what was done for you. These victims of Boko Haram, we are taken to the White House. We are taken to Washington. To the people, because sometimes when we talk here, people say, how are we going to bring the international community? The international community that are more aware than you. Mm. The international community is waiting for you. Yeah, the international are you busy following a, 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 a supreme leader? Yes. They understand the underlying issue. Their problem is not superior. Their problem, their problem is to save the lives of our people. Exactly. And not just even the lives of our people, their own life, because they understand that this is a global issue. Terrorism is an international issue. It's not a local issue. It's just like some diseases that you have in your hospital. They say, if you have such so, so, so thing, you have to report it to a bigger organization because you can't micromanage it. So is terrorism. So the reason is not what you sit down and say, I want to micromanage. Yeah. It's something that because they know that if you allow that thing to cook, after cooking, it will explode and affect them. They know that their own nation is at stake. So you can see what is happening. You can see the pictures, conferences, meetings have taken place. Our people have been represented and decisions have been made at high places. We told you people here that we have three phases of alliance. The intra-regional alliance. Where our people, we are gathered together, like in Lower Niger area, where we know we have a lot of nations in Lower Niger alone. We have up to six nations, six nationalities in our Lower Niger area. Because of those that are saying diversity, diversity, that Nigeria diversity. The diversity we have in Lower Niger is more than the diversity that is every any place. We are already diverse enough in our Lower Niger region. We are very diverse. If you go to Middle Belt, they are also very diverse. So those that are using diversity to hold us in Nigeria, can you stop? Can you stop? Diversity does not mean that you come together with somebody that you don't have the same common, that you don't have uh, 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 the value system that is the same. That's not diversity. That's not what you're supposed to do. Diversity does not mean that you bring black and call it white and call black, uh, call white black. That's not diversity. <laughs> so we have intra-regional alliance then we have inter-regional where middle belt Yorubas, all of us we came together and formed the alliance then we have the international imperative i said it last week where we had to bring in those at international level the stakeholders some of them have resources in our land some of them have investment in our land 
So they are all part of what is going on already. These things have been wrapped together. The international community has said, who are we going to meet? They are already aware. They are more aware. You can see the videos that we showed you. These things are coming from them. Telling you that they know more than you do. So when you keep lying, you will look, you present yourself as a dishonest person. Please stop putting off to shame. All you professors, doctors, and whatever you call yourselves. Because when you are lying, Osibanjo, that's why they had to declare him the lying vice president. Because they have people, or they have surveillance. They have diplomats. They have people giving them information 24 hours. Then you will go there and tell them, no, nothing is happening. It's farmer clashing with headman. Oh, nothing is happening. You are lying. And they are not going to allow you and tolerate your life for too long. That's what we're talking to our people. So that you will be part of what is going on. We don't want to keep listening to people that do not know what we're going through. I remember that more than a lot of a guy. He said, Obasanjo canceled debt. I said, no, it wasn't Obasanjo that canceled debt. It was our sister Okonjiwala that used her connection to cancel the debt. And when she finished canceling the debt, what did Obasanjo do? Obasanjo ran her off. It was good luck that now brought her back because they don't want anything good for our people. It's about their selfish interest. Whatever they do is what we, they will still like all the money is all Buhari returning. Oh, we are returning our bachelor's money. Where is the money that is being returned? What is he doing with it? He's sharing it, his girlfriends and his children and his daughters. It's for their personal use. It's not for you, my people. It is not for you. And that's why we're saying it is time for us to move forward. It's time to reset Nigeria. It's time to rebuild that system. It's a system change we need. We're not changing driver anymore. Professor Magale, we don't need you to drive a failed vehicle. A vehicle without engine. There's no miracle you will do that will make the vehicle to move because there's no engine. Engine is a not engine vehicle. You're not going anywhere. You'll be running in circles. Exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't even run in circles. You'll be in one spot. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Mm. All right. So one of the things that we wanted to start doing this, starting this weekend, is to bring our one of our brothers from the uh, uh, land of the rising sun to give us a, a first-hand witness, uh, witness. Because a lot of people get confused. I speak to a lot of people in that but they are still not getting it. Because when they go home, they hire security. They go to their villages. They show up their little dollar and pounds. And then they come back. They don't know what our people go through on a daily, uh, daily basis. What is like is, is traumatizing. So the idea is to bring someone on ground because we we don't want to sit in our houses in America and give you guys all the nitty gritty of what's going on. It's actually more in depth than that. So our goal is to bring one of our brothers today or sisters at that matter. For us to tell us the most outrageous things that, that happened this week back home, uh, on the ground, whether it's during the time you're in Keke and Pepe, because a brother called me last week and he was in tears. He said, if you see how these people are handling our mothers and our sons, they will be beating people for no reason. No reason at all, they will just be beating people. And the emphasis on this is that to let people know we, have, we cannot continue to waste time we cannot continue to be complacent. We cannot continue, continue to say, eh, anyone, what, you know, you will be doing it there. You know, because people are going through it. They are going through it. And I keep saying that God did not send us to diaspora to come and enjoy ourselves. Maybe some part of that. But I think ultimately he sent us here so that at a time like this, when our people has been captured, when our people have been captured, that we will come out and rise up for our people. That's why he did this. So don't use your Americanized citizen or your British citizen or your Canadian citizen or whatever citizenship that you may find yourself and think it's for you and your family to be living large. No, it's not. It's not. It's okay if you can live large and help your brother. I'm not gonna, talking about your immediate family because a lot of us will give money to your, our immediate family and call ourselves philanthropists. Philanthropist. Uh, <laughs> I give money to my sister. I'm a philanthropist. <laughs> I do. So that's not what we're talking about. You know, invest resources, invest time, invest energy in what we're doing because it's for the overall good. 
we Africans should start thinking for the overall good, not like, oh, okay, give me a role, let me take care of my family, we are good, and you're kind of like being nice to the people around you and giving them rice and aging oil. My that's dad, what I'm talking about. You know, that's how we were before. We are communal people, and we're still like that. Is this colonial issue that destroyed us? Because they came and brought some strange words. Like in our language before, when you say one name, one name is my literal meaning is my mother's child. But that name, that you can call your cousin that, you can call your uncle, your anybody near you from your village and your clan is one nigga. And that's what confuses them. When you say, oh, it's my sister, they'll say, huh? Is it your mother that I gave back to her? Mm -hmm. They will not understand it. Mm -hmm. So they took away our culture. And that's why we are going back. When we talk of restoration, because sometimes we think to say restoration, we are not saying restoring you to whatever name in your brain. That's not what we're saying. You say it's identity restoration that we are talking about. So who you are and who you were originally, your ancestors. So when we talk about nationalities, forming alliance in Ninas, the Igbos, you come, you are you are you are you are an ethnic nationality, Ibibio, Urobo, Yoruba, because UN has a directory with all the ethnic nationalities registered, already there with their maps and everything. So when you come, you come from that root because that is what 2007 indigenous people's rights is all about. It's about the indigenous person. You cannot be an indigenous Igbo person if you're calling yourself Biafra. Biafra is not indigenous to your land as an Igbo person. Biafra is just like Nigeria, where some people gathered, you, 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 you answer this name. So that's why we're telling our people, be careful about names. But that does not mean that when we have our title of relationship in that whole area, we will decide as a people, all the people involved, all the ethnic nationalities there, what to answer. It will be a dis collective decision. Then we say this is what we want to be known as. This nation that we are forming, this is what we want to be called. That's democracy. That is how it is done. You have to count one before you count two. You don't count your egg before you hatch them. You have to hatch your egg. Then you start counting one, two, three. Please, let's explain to our people so that they will understand. Are they there? Is somebody online yet? Yes, yes. So our first hand witness is here to give us some information for today, okay? All right. Daniel, please go ahead. Okay, uh, good evening, uh, everyone watching this uh, very program this evening. I greet each and every one of us here from Akwaibo. I am with uh, our brothers here, and uh, some of them will give an account of what is going on in Akwaibo. I witness report of what is happening on ground and to call our people to do the need for this very evening. I want to thank those who have given us the opportunity, Daughters of Truth, to join in this program this evening. I want to talk about the issues of uh, the political uh, issues going on in our crime because there is no need, we, no way we'll talk about social awareness without looking at the political situation here in Akwaibo. We are in a civil service-based economy, and um, in this civil service-based economy, we have, um, be, everything has been so politicized to the extent that, everything has been so politicized to the extent that people no longer think about uh, social survival people no longer think about uh, how to advance their uh, the progress of their society the progress of their environment or rather it is how to benefit from the political uh, 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 kick that is being shared at the end of the day young people are now engrossed so much on in politics that at the end of the day we don't have voice of truth. We don't have a uh, voice of uh, that stands with the people. Whenever you come out to speak, they are always asking of which political divide 
do you belong? Is he of the PDP or of the APC? So this is the problem we are having today. So we are calling on our youth that it is there is every need for them to do the needful, to think about tomorrow and not just what their pocket can eat today. To think about tomorrow and not just what they will be able to feed at the, in the coming days. To think about tomorrow to make sure that at the end of the day, things are better for their unborn children. That is why we are doing all we are doing today to, to emancipate our people. And before I continue for that, uh, Brother Ye will also want to speak with uh, everyone that is watching this evening. Good evening to everyone of us here watching this program. I want to say good evening to us all here from River Yimi. Beautiful program. I'm Comrade Seth, qualified from Aquaribo, um, and I'm giving an eyewitness update on the affairs of things here in Aquaribo State. Um, I first and foremost want to stress on the issue of uh, um, um, opportunities for the youths. Yeah. Yes. So, youths here in Aquaribo State, over time, has found themselves to be at the receiving end of every political issues, every political phenomena. And by that, I mean that those at the hem of, of affairs have decided animously to sit down and, 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 and you know, uh, 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 take on every available resources, embezzling funds. I'm not just talking about it. The, the, the youth in Aquarium State, I must say, have been exploited in the sense that you can find that there are so many jobless youth. The rate of 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 of, of uh, no employment in uh, of lack of employment in in. in, in it's urgent, urgent, you know, it comes of urgent uh, attention. Because here in Aquarium State, you find that all the youths are, 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 are so much involved in politics. Uh, you, uh, uh, um, the youths are being carried along. But you find out that they, from, from the information, from the knowledge being uh, uh, imparted to them about politics, it's something else. And if it's causing it's a cause for alarm. Because they now forget the basic understanding that sovereignty lies with the people. Yes. Sovereignty lies with the people, not with the government. We decide who sits at the helm at the helm of affairs. And because they fail to recognize that simple fact, it has come to be a, a cancer, I must say, that eating into the into the fabric of acquired statutes. We it's behind that we begin to revamp our understanding about politics and come to understand that sovereignty lies with us. We have to take the bull by the horn. If we can sit and cross our hands and watch those at the helm of affairs, uh, 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 you know. They 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 embezzle funds and do what they want to do it. And that is supposed to be. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. it is very alarming. It is very very appalling that. Introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Indifreke Moses. Uh, yeah. I'm calling from Itinan local government in Akwaibom State. Uh, it is very very alarming and very very annoying to know or to see that the youths uh have no say the youths cannot really express themselves owing to the fact that some unnecessary cabals in the country have taken over and we do not know what to do now as a stands In Aquaibom State, the youths are totally annoyed. Reason is because we cannot express ourselves. And this is owing to the fact that the kind of constitution that we operate doesn't really give us room and enough access to our basic rights. You find a situation whereby the, the, the rights of the youths are being trampled upon. A situation whereby the youth cannot have effective say without being afraid. You know, it is it is it is very very alarming, and there is need for something to be done urgently because it will get to a stage where the youth may go crazy. 
it will get to a stage where things will go haywire. So we are calling and demanding that the youth of Akwaibom states should be given a voice, both at the in all level, both the national level, the state level, the local level. We are clamoring for a change. Enough is enough to the stigmatization of the youth. We are totally far behind, unlike other countries where you see that their youth have a say. But in Nigeria, especially in Akwaibom State, we do not have a say. So I am calling, earnestly calling, that the youth of Akwaibom State should be given a chance to express themselves without being afraid of being arrested or being afraid of being harmed. Thank you very much. Yes, uh... Thank you. Go ahead. To what we are passing through as young people here in Akwaibo. We are young people that have a voice. We are young people that have um, responsibility. We have visions and dreams. But it is subject to your political alignment. You are ready to uh, pay allegiance to. If you are not ready to, or someone like me, not ready to work with the PDP, not ready to work with the government of the day, not ready to support them in their uh, mediocre mindset and wickedness in in extorting from the people, then will not be given such opportunity. to vent their anger. The alternative that we are left with is either you support them or you sit behind the fence. But we thank God for opportunities like this. The world has that it is not because we don't want to speak out, but who care to listen? Who are those that want to listen to us? What are the options on the table for us? And what are the ways to advance our cause as a people? We in Akwaibon, we know the wrongs of the constitution. We know how we have been shortchanged as a people. But what do we do? So we have been in a strange land, a strange system, governed by a strange constitution. We Our cultural and heritage have been bastardized and have been stolen away from us. But what do we do? It is either we rise up now as a people to fight, rise up now to challenge the status quo, or we will remain as victims. I will end up by saying this to my people. We should not continue to cry victimization because the oppressors, the promoters of the 1999 constitution are doing this to their own gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we do? For we to rise up from the state of victimhood to competitor is for we to challenge the status quo. We are calling on every acquired mind, especially the young one, young ones, or this uh, revolution that is taking place right now, the constitutional revolution that is taking place right now to participate fully, so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to have a say, our contributions would be counted. Because the, 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 the oppressor has his agenda, and it is to oppress us. It is with the victims that will continue crying of victimization because we have no agenda. The moment we have an agenda, then we will rise to the clarion call, being a competitor at the end of the day. What have we decided in our hearts to do? Remember the, the, the story in the Holy Book where the people decided to build a, a tower that will get to heaven. They have not yet built it, but God saw. The Bible said that God said it, that if these people, God saw it, that this, this thing is already done, this tower is already built. This is an idea that was conceived unanimously in the hearts of this man. So wherever we conceive in our hearts, we will be able to achieve it, just like the idea of positional force majority has been conceived. If we come out unanimously, so people are quite boy. Peter Kida unanimously in am person is up and possible. It is a a a jirinam. He has been cooking too fine jiribami. But am I no iba kite jiribami? Of the day, be sweet, what were you probably sweet by another number and it be back, it be packed with an ufunomi. So, yeah, that did I support me for the lower Niger Congress and a mammy so that not only a dribble of ufu and Basil Kerewo, Basil Dio Kerukere when I'm a programmer me, Abana, Nava, me. It's also thank you very much.
Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? Yes. You see, our people, our language is our identity. When somebody says, I am an evil woman, the way you will confirm it is the way I speak evil. You will know whether I learned it or I'm really an evil woman. So we are not joking with our identity. We are restoring our land and our people. Can you hear the young ones talking about constitutional revolution? People like Professor Mogalu from our region. Is he hearing what our people from Akwa Ibom are saying? But he is more concerned about Almajuris in Sokoto and Kasina. Hmm. Hmm. What do you call that? Misplaced priority. So much. And that's what they run in their homes. Because like what we talk about family is that family, then you talk about community and then the nation. If you cannot manage your family, if in your family you have misplaced priority, you will reproduce, reproduce that outside in the nation. And we're saying no. Because even in the Bible, before you can be a bishop in church, you must have managed your family. That's a sign. And Jesus said you should start from your Jerusalem. So our politicians, we are telling you, 2021, start from your own Jerusalem. Stop worrying yourself about what, uh, uh, how to give um, an imagery. Let the dead bury the dead. Let those that created al majority in northeast and not south go and take care of them over there. You take care of the al majority that they have created in your own neighborhood. At Newi, at Akwaibo, in our land, we have children that are very intelligent, ready to take the world, but they are not presented with the opportunity because you politicians are playing with the destiny of our children. And we are saying never again. You political elites, we are saying never again because our children are rising. We are not only here talking, we have food soldiers on ground. We will stop you. Amen. We will stop you. You will yep. not take us again to another election under the 1999 constitution. You will not do that. We will not allow you to do it. We will solve our sovereignty problem and then we start election. We will count one and count two. Someone, please go ahead. All right, my sister. So I'm just going to play the new jingle. We are almost done. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, concerns, uh, if what we have uh, discussed today, still... what we discussed today, if you're still confused, you know, you get an opportunity to call in and ask a question. So let me just play this song real quick. Constitutional force major. Make a talk I'm again. Constitutional force major. Oh yeah, here I'm again. Constitutional force major. That's not the new reigning motto where they don't come out for the Nigeria Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self Determination. Minas. Mm. Constitutional force major. Now, waiting we go take forward march to freedom all the ethnic nationality them where they don't throw away inside cage for this dungeon where they call Nigeria. If you never knew us before, eh? Now we be the people of Middle Belt and South. We don't join hand together to formulate the Nigeria Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self Determination. Minas. Listen to this one. On 16 December 2020, now we don't declare a constitutional force major on the fraudulent Nigeria Lila 1999 constitution. Now the Yeye Fulani ethnic minority carry this sufferness through way for the head of the people who get the land in the first place since 1999. Kai, as they don't condemn that 1999 Wayo constitution, Ekwa, men has done direct the Nigeria government to gather a national roundtable meeting. Look for talk the kind style where we go take done for inside our region on top country where we they sleep for only one eye mm -hmm. this now waiting that big grammar constitutional force mature go do suffering and smiling mm -mm. they don't do nigeria people don't suffer rich waiting we never see nigerian people don't chop fear from out all the land of the south and middle belt don't turn to river of blood waiting 
all because of this evil Nigeria 1999 lie lie constitution. Hey, I beg, true to God, they don't push us to reach the wall. You know where to go again. Enough is enough. So therefore, oh yeah, everybody, make we come, make we join hand now with Nenas. Make we for support the constitutional force majeure to free ourselves from the Fulani British captivity so that we go forward march into a free nation where your security and development is guaranteed. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, so if you're still confused, you can leave your comment and we'll try to address it. We are uh, going into a meeting, another meeting, um, all this in the name of trying to make sure that our people are fully educated about what we are doing. So um, please, um, we hate to rush out of the show, but we want to thank you so much. I, we hope that we have met your, um, we have delivered some message today that you understood uh, what we're trying to do and where we're going, you know, we have to push this. We have to push this information. We have to share, 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 share. And we're not sharing because we want it done. We are, God has blessed us. We are good. We just want this information to go out to our people. And God is doing a marvelous thing. A, a brother told us, a, told one of our food soldiers, how he was going to share the pamphlet. He did not know that one of the police officers, uh, head big police officers has uh, gotten the flyer. And the man won't let him talk. Though. So he said he had to pack his stuff and leave because the man took over and started prophesizing, uh, prophesying what the uh, constitutional force majority is and the five demands and what people need to do. He said he packed his stuff and started going for another location. <laughs> <laughs> the job is done. <laughs> so he, he couldn't get he couldn't get over himself. He's like, oh yes, you know, they're getting it. So people are getting the information, but until yes. you, 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 you sign up, even for those of us in diaspora. You can sign up your parents back home. You have their information. You can sign up your sisters, your brothers, because a lot of them are too hungry to key into what we are doing. It's us that is here. As long as you have their valid information, sign up for them. Sign up for them. Let them know that you're signing up for them and they put their name there. So don't wait to think, oh, let me send my nephew the link and this and this. You may be able to sign up for your nephews. You know, talk to them and see if that's something that they want us to do, want you to do. Because of limited data, they may not want to start scrolling here and scrolling there. But we have all their information. So those of us in the diaspora can immediately even sign up hundreds of our cousins, the ones that will be sending money, money to. Because the sooner we can get this thing done, the sooner the cousins and the nieces and the nephews can get a job and get off our, 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 get off our pockets. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We will be here next week. And, um, you know, uh, actually, should I share that information for them to join that meeting as well? I don't know if you guys want to join. Yes. We'll put it on our page, our uh, Facebook page, uh, yes. Facebook page, for you guys to join the meeting. This is a very good meeting from, uh, is it the group of ICANN? Who... Yes, they need to, they need to, it's titled Resetting Nigeria to Sanity. You need to be part of that meeting. Um, our brother, uh, Pastor Tony, will also be speaking. Although the restructuring people will be there talking their own, but when we finish, we'll shoot them down with our own because we know that we have a superior argument. Um, we want our people to have a voice. So please, we're going to post it. And it started at 5 p.m. Nigerian time. Yeah, we are not afraid of debate. Bring it on. This is what we no. want. We're not afraid yes. of debate. We've we done our talk. work and we'll take you down because you, yes. you're not going anywhere with the first state called Nigeria. No. You know, giving you guys 60 years, we're giving yes. your internal and external colonizer 100 years of uh, uh, business, uh, uh, what is it called, business enterprise in our land, and they mm -hmm. haven't done anything for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is our time, people. We are yes. the constituents. Let's go out there and fight this war because you can see our brother Daniel and the rest of them, they are not doing too well and we need to come to their rescue. So we cannot wait till we see you guys uh, next week. Thank you guys so much. Much love. Hi. Bye.